We're recording. And today we are going to have to use the tablet for sure because what I'm doing is I'm doing this as if I'm doing this on paper so that you can give an, get an idea of your, what it is like and you, then you can start to think about what will help you, you know, in the exam because it is still open book and open notes just like the first and the second exam but the format is quite different from those two. So that's what we are doing here. Um, let's see, R, C, T, Y, okay, nope, yeah, it doesn't, okay, let's do that again, nope, all right, all right, one more time, I disconnected and reconnected the, yep, now it starts, all righty, all right. So this is basically what we're going to do the entire day today is to just look at you know, the exam, um, just maximize it you know, to kind of minimize the um, background. All right, so this is what yours is going to look like, okay? But I would still urge you to read the instructions as if you haven't read it. So typically, uh, the, the final exam for this class is me giving you a program. So the program, if I were to look at the last page, the program in C is on the last page. And this is the program written in C. Um, you are welcome to tear the thing apart just so that you can um, refer to the C code as one piece of program and then go back to the assembly code side by side. Um, I sprinkled the C code into the assembly code as well, okay? Um, so with this particular program, okay, let me, Start from the beginning. Uh, we have the usual thing, which is a structure. Okay, so structure, pointers, they're all gonna be in the final exam. So we have a structure, which is called a node. It has a value, it has an L pointer and an R pointer. So that should remind you of your homework assignment a little bit. Um, and then we have an insert um, function here. It takes one PN and it takes the you know, one double pointer, which is PP attach, pointer to a pointer to where we, is supposed to attach to. It has a, a conditional statement. So we'll get into this later, okay? Um, if you spot something that you do not understand, we'll talk about it. But otherwise, you know, we're gonna defer the actual discussion of each line until we get to the implementation and we, we try to spot you know, what is wrong with the code. Um, getting down a little bit, uh, we have your main. The only thing that may be new to you is how we use, how I use the word static here. Does, every, does anyone not understand what static is when it is applied to local variables? So there are two aspects of variables. One is the scope, okay? So local variables versus global variables you know, determine the scope. But there's one second thing that most people do not think about. It has to do with the lifespan of your local var of your variables. Global variables have a global lifespan, so that part is pretty easy to understand. You know, they exist before you get to main, and they continue to exist, quote unquote, you know, after you return from main. So that's global variable. But local variable, on the other hand, only means that they have a local scope. So the lifespan of a local variable is by default, quote unquote, local, which means they do not exist until the function is called the invocation is what created the variable, so, but they only last until the function returns, then the variable goes away too. So that matches what we have talked about in this class, about you know, how local variables are on the stack, so when we allocate a frame, they start to exist, but when the frame goes away, then they cease to exist. So we can, but, but that doesn't have to be the case. If you declare a local variable static, then they become kind of like a global variable, but with a local variable scope. That is difficult to understand in assembly language programming because labels are globally visible, okay? So we don't really have any concept of local. So the only thing that I can use to describe this is nodes is a local variable of main. No one else, no other function is supposed to have visibility of nodes, you know, which is the name of the variable, you know, except for main. Is that okay? Is that concept described sufficiently? But the existence, okay, of node 
is outside of the stack. It, it is not a stack item. It is just like with global variable, except other functions cannot see the name nodes because it is it has a local scope. Are we doing okay so far with that concept? Scope versus lifespan. We are recording. Just wanted wanted to make sure. Yep. All right. So other than that, you know, we have kind of the usual stuff um, with a little bit of uh, commenting in C code here. So the way I would approach this exam, the final exam, is don't focus on what the C code is doing as a whole. Okay, you translate the C code one statement at a time, one expression at a time, one function call at a time. So don't worry about what it is supposed to do as a whole, just focus on the statements, the expressions, the conditions, the control structures, and so on. So that's my advice, because you're not going to be using a computer, so there's no way for you to actually run the code to find out what is wrong with it. So, so that's my advice here. So once again, in the final exam, I would tear out the last page, which is a C code, and have it to, this, to be on, on the side. So this way, you can refer to the C code as you go through the assembly code. All right, so getting back to the assembly code, which is kind of long, okay? The first page is really just describing what you need to do. Um, you have to basically find the bugs and tell me what each bug is. So your job is to identify the bugs, explain what they are, and fix them. Identification is you know, what is supposed to be done and what is actually done instead. Use the comments to relate the assembly code with the C code. This means you know, all the registers involved with the bug or the error if any, should be tracked and explained, okay? So you have to tell me, oh, this thing is being used as if it is blah, 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 but it is actually just blah, blah, blah. Um, explain why the expected code is not done, expected work is not done, and change the code to make it work. So basically, you're just describing me, describing to me, you know, what is wrong with the program and why the fix is going to work. All right, um, and you know, here comes one thing that is also important. Do not change code that is correct to begin with. In other words, you know, some people try to use an approach of, well, I know how to implement this. I'm just going to replace the entire chunk of code with my code. That is not going to be working. That, that, that's going to cost points, okay, because I don't want people to make changes when they are not necessary. All right, um, to explain... Uh, use comments to relay the register to concept in the C code, to remove code, cross it out, and explain why you're crossing it out. To change the code, you can do in-place editing because this is all on paper. So you can use any type of editing technique as long as it is clear to me. So you can cross out something and then use an arrow to point to a you know, larger area. Then you can just, just kind of tell me what you want to replace it with. I would suggest that you use a uh, writing instrument that is of a color that's easier for you to see, uh, like blue, but don't use any light color, okay? You can bring a highlighter if you want to too, okay? That might be helpful. Um, also, know that you may be asked about what is in a specific register after an instruction, so in that case, you just have to tell me what it is, but your answer should relate as much as possible to concepts in C and C++, okay? So if this is a variable, which variable, okay? Are we having the address of the variable or are we having the value of the variable in the register or are we having what it points to in the register? So you have to relate the uh, register content as closely as possible to a description in C or C++. Is that okay? So I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by all this, okay? So I'm going through the entire process of doing this. All right. So I will go ahead and get started here, okay? So the program is long, but if you are familiar with the usual way that we do things and how the stack is supposed to look like, and also the agreement between the caller and the callee, it should not be, it, you should be able to finish the entire thing. Okay? Whether you catch every single bug or not is not even relevant because I'm just gonna take the third highest score in the entire class, turn that into a full score, and then scale everybody you know, accordingly. So you don't have to worry about, oh, so you know, what is the best 
you know, student, what if the best student in this class can only catch 75% of the bugs? Doesn't matter. That rescale, you know, according to the third highest score, that just get rescaled. So is that okay so far? Does everybody understand the grading uh, scheme behind the whole thing? Okay. All right. All right. So we we are just going to go through this, you know, line by line. Okay. This is the entry point of the code. Uh, this is how we initialize the stack pointer to zero. So any change of this instruction to LDID with a zero, it's going to cost you points, okay? A fraction of a point, but nonetheless a point because this is fine, okay? This is how we can make sure that the stack pointer start with zero is to subtract it from itself, all right? So do not make changes that are unnecessary, okay? You know, if a different sequence of instruction can get the same thing done, leave it alone, okay? Just say, okay, I know what it is, but I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, so until you get to a bug, you don't have to document everything because that's going to cost you a lot of time. So don't, you don't have to do it, but if you want to do it, that's fine too because at some point, it'll be pretty hard to track what each instruction is doing and you really have to get down to what each register is containing, okay? So if in this case, you can just go like, okay, sorry about that. Because when I touch my screen, you know, it's, so what the way I do it is I look at the, this is just initialize, you know, the stack pointer. Okay, so initialize, you know, the stack pointer. Um, and then we have the pushing of the return address. Okay, this is push return address. And this is calling, and you know, we do have a halt instruction here. So this is your know, um, end of program. This is me just documenting it, okay? You don't have to document these things because there's nothing wrong with this part of the program. Some of you may be asking, but I see a problem here because we are used to seeing LDI a you know, dot six plus. This is a dot five plus, but it's not a problem because I changed the relative position between the LDI instruction and the decrement D instruction. In other words, the dot five plus is still describing the address of the halt instruction in this case. So functionally speaking, even though this code does not look the same as what you normally see in this class, it still gets the same job done. It is not an error, so do not correct it. Do not fix it. You can document it, you can comment, but don't fix it. Is, is that okay? All right. All right, so moving on, okay, so now we are looking, you can see how I'm using the C code and kind of sprinkle the C code in between the assembly code. That is to help you to relate, oh, what is this bunch of instruction doing? Well, it's, you know, the commented out C code is what the assembly code is trying to do. So in this case, we have the offset to different members of a node structure. Um, v is the first member, it has an offset of zero. The next one is L, it is relative to V by one byte because the V is only taking up one byte. The next one is R, it is relative to L. It also is, L only has one byte because it's a pointer, so R is correctly defined. And then the size of the entire node is the last member or the offset to the last member plus the size of the last member, which since because it is a pointer, it only takes up one byte in TDP. So this definition is correct. I do not see any problem with it. Okay, um, and then we move on a little bit. So if you need me to stay on a particular at a particular place, you can always just let me know. Otherwise, I will keep talking and moving on. Okay, so now we have a pound defined num nodes to be five, and you know that is just done by a label definition of the same name. And then we have the entry point of insert. So the way I do this is I always you know, try to use symbolic names whenever it is possible. So in this case, uh, it has no local variables. So LVS is defined to be a zero. Do we have to do that? No, but is it wrong? Nope, it is not wrong. So don't fix it, okay? It is not wrong. But we do want to take a look at what is on the stack you know, in the frame of insert. So when you look at a stack, you know, when you're in insert, then you know that the um, caller is going to push pn first, and then the caller would also push your pp attach, and then the caller would push the return address. So that means you know, by the time we get into the, to the entry point of the subroutine, 
the distance, okay, the distance from where the stack pointer points to to the return address is going to be a zero. So that means the label definition of return address is correct. The next one relative to the offset to the return address is p attached, which is the first um, parameter. And then the next one is uh, pp attach. Ooh, wait. Okay, pp attach. And the next one is pn, which is relative to the first parameter and off by one byte because each pointer is only taking up one byte. So these definitions, they all look right to me. So now we can move on, continue with the rest of the code. All right. So the rest of the code starts with the allocation of the local variable, which is line 84 to line 85. And whenever I see something like this, I would automatically go to the end and see if there's a matching deallocation of the same thing. So I'm not waiting until the end because I want to look at the end of the function. So I can see the deallocation of LVS. Okay, now even though it is a zero, it still should be there. But I'm missing something here. What am I missing? What is this function missing? Because you can see main nodes, which is not a part of insert, is already starting here. What am I missing here? Hmm? Increment D is a part of something else. So collectively, what am I missing? I'm missing three instructions. So which three instructions are we missing? And what is the purpose of those three instructions? What, what happens at the end of insert? It will deallocate the local variables, which is, there's none, right? Well, because we know this label is defined to be zero. So it's basically it's adding zero to the stack pointer. And then what, what does it do? What is it supposed to do? It's the end of a function. What is the end of a function supposed to do? Return, exactly, okay? So it's supposed to return to the caller. There's no instruction here to return to the caller. So that means, you know, okay, we, we found a problem here. So to say it is an insertion, you can do something like this, okay? I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with how to you know, uh, indicate that you're inserting. So you can basically now say, uh, missing return to caller. And the instructions we need here is LD. It's usually okay to use B, okay? I would just say always, um, because register A may be used to, to return a return value. So I would just kind of avoid using register A for this purpose. Uh, increment D to uh, deallocate the return address. And then JMPB, in this case, to continue execution at the caller. So this would be sufficient, okay? You know, this tells me that we are returning, we are missing the return code to back to the caller, and this is what we're supposed to have there in order to return to the caller. But this is just the way I do things. You know, I just look at the beginning, I look for the end right away, I look at the structure, okay? And then we go back into the actual detail of the program for the function in this case to find out you know, whether it is done correctly or not. But you may have a different approach of doing things, you know, and that's perfectly okay as well. Um, I like to draw pictures, okay, and that's why I drew the call frame of insert. All right, so now we look at line 88, and the commented line means this is the C code corresponding to whatever instruction that follows. And I am truthful, okay, in this sense, okay, I always tell you what C code is corresponding to the following assembly code as much as possible, okay? So this way you don't have to flip-flop between the actual C program and the assembly code. This gives you the context of what the following code is supposed to do. Okay, so in my head, okay, I'm just tracking here. Register A has the offset, then register A has the address, then register A has PP attach itself, and then the you know, register C has what PP attach points to. So when you look at line 96, 91, sorry, 91 and 92, I am supposed to explain, so I would do that. So I'm going to say um, A is the offset to PP attach, and it is okay for you to use abbreviations as well if you want to. So now A is the address of PP attach, 
And at this point, A is PP attach. And the register B is one more D reference. So B is whatever PP attach points to. Is that okay? So I would write the you know, comment like this in case there is an error. So now I have to ask uh, NCC, okay? So we are comparing, we're not comparing, we're forcing register C through the ALU so that I can determine whether it's a zero or not. All right, so now the question is, am I going to the right point? If you look at the original code, if PP attach is not null, we continue with the then uh, statement. If it is zero, we are supposed to go to some kind of an else. So now I look for uh, insert else zero. So I'm looking at the structure of the code right now. And you know, the end of the then block of statement should have a continuation to um, pass, to get past the end of the else. So we can see the insert else zero is here. This is where the else is. And we can immediately see there's a JMPI to insert and if. So that's good, okay? So the structure of the conditional statement is here. And I just want to make sure that uh, insert and if zero is indeed defined some at some point, And it is on line 167. So as far as I'm concerned, the control structure, the outermost conditional statement is okay now. Then I go back into the then statement to continue to continue my analysis. So now I go back here. Okay. So if I were you know, if I were doing this test, you know, I would even put a little check mark here and say everything is checked up to this point just so that I know where to go back to. All right, so the next statement I need to, or the next conditional statement I need to look into is this thing here. And this is relatively long, okay, because you know, this is the next one. This is you know, all this stuff here, okay, from line 97 to line 106, you know, more or less, is really corresponding to the conditional statement that is commented out on line 96, okay? All right. So once again, okay, if you look at something that looks really complex, don't be intimidated, okay? What you need to do is to break it down step by step according to the sequence of instructions that you need. In other words, if I were to do this, what do I need first? Then what do I need? Then what do I need? And so on, okay? So look at the dependency of those concepts, okay? So ultimately, I need to compare, but I need to figure out the left-hand side and the right-hand side for the comparison. Um, so according to this code, the first thing we do is to get the offset of PN. We um, use a LDBB, okay? Wait, hold on a second here. What is insert PN? Is that the address of the parameter? If it is not, okay, because the question obviously hints that it's not, what is it? What is the label? The label defines the offset from where the stack pointer points to to the thing that we name after. So that means, wait, hold on a second here. By the time we dereference register B, it is not an address. So we are missing something here. So we'll go ahead and, so I'm gonna comment it because according to the description, you know, if, when I fix a bug, I have to comment, you know, what is the problem? So now we say B is the offset to PN. And so at this point, it is still an offset. It's not the address, okay? So we can use this symbol again to insert a, um, an instruction of add BD so that B becomes the address of PN, okay? So that's what I'm looking for is not only that you tell me what is inserted here, but also what does it do? It doesn't have to be full sentences. It's like, oh, this is supposed to be the address and we are doing this. You just have to tell me if I add this new instruction, that's what it's gonna do. So with the new instruction inserted, then the next statement is going to say B, whoops, B, why is it not? Okay, I'm still using the right tool. Yep. So B at this point becomes PN because we just dereference the address of PN. 
Um, and then we have A being the offset. So A is the offset to um, member B. Now, if you don't mention member you know, from the context, it's fine, okay? You know, I'm not picky about you know, how specific your statements are. So when we add these two, then B becomes the address of member V of whatever structure the PN is pointing to. So I'm, I need to track all of this, okay? Because when I'm talking like this, I can't mentally keep track of all the registers at the same time. Now, if I were to sit down and just do this, I can actually keep track of all of that in my mind. But since I'm not doing that, you know, that becomes kind of difficult. Okay. So it's adding C to A. Hmm. That doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to me. Okay. So I'm going to go like, hmm, I'm not sure what that statement is doing because register C is, oh, okay, I see what is register C. So register C, okay, so this goes back to what is in register C in on line uh, 92, and I mistakenly wrote down the wrong register because it's not register B. It is register C over here. And register C has not been clobbered, you know, when we get to line 101, so when we add C to A, register A is the offset from the address of a structure to member V. So when we get to line 101, when we add C to A, what do we get? Okay. So now we have to think about the types of the parameter. So can someone tell me what is PP attached? What is the type of PP attach? It's up here. It is a pointer to a pointer to a struct node. Okay. What is in register C is PPA, whatever PPA points to. So whatever PPA points to is basically now we have one more asterisk as the type. So we have the address of a node. Register C at this point on line 92, as, as long as it's not null, has the address of a structure. So by adding the offset to a member to the address of the structure, now register A is the address of, in this case, asterisk of PPA, okay? That is by itself a pointer to a structure, and it has its own member V. That structure has member V as well. So that is the kind of thing that I would track, okay? Um, and this part here, okay, all the work that I have done up to line 101 is based on your understanding of the concepts in CISP 360. Now, is it a little bit twisted and a little bit kind of cumbersome? Yeah, I would say it's a little bit like, like that. But if you do it step by step, you can come to the same conclusion. You can track all of that. It's just a matter of you have to keep track of all the registers. So when I go through the dereferencing on line 102 and 103, so now you know, here, um, B is really just the value of member V of the structure the PM points to. And now A is, this one looks kind of funky, like that. And I'm comparing those two. All right, so let's take a step back and see whether that is what the program is supposed to do. Yep, okay. So we are subtracting the left-hand side of the comparison, excuse me, the other way around. We're subtracting the right-hand side from the left-hand side because the register B is PM, you know, points to V, and then A is um, member V of the structure that the pointer that in return is pointed to by PPA has. <sighs> okay, that was kind of long. Okay, so now we have a comparison. Then we have a conditional branch. So now we have to ask, is it the right kind of conditional branch? So the conditional statement is saying, if it is less than, we go to the then portion. So are we going to the then portion according to the instruction? The answer is yes, okay, very good. The next question is, are we using the right flag for that branch? So the question is, what is the type of V in this case? So for that, you have to go back to the structure definition which is up here a little bit. It is a signed integer. Okay, let me point out where we found that. 
So because v is a signed integer right here, so that means are we okay with using c or should we change it to something else? That's my that's my question. So we are focusing on line doo -doo, line 105 right now. Is that okay with you? It's not okay, okay? Remember, we talked about the flags. In the signed comparison, we do not use the borrow flag, which is known as the carry flag when we refer to it. So you have to say this, is, this should be a JLI because V is signed, okay? So this is where I have to emphasize, this test is not by design comprehensive but it is implicitly comprehensive because you still have to remember all the flags when we talked about binary comparison. You still have to remember what is signed versus what is unsigned and all the comparison stuff that we talked about, okay? So that's why it is important to kind of keep all of those things around. So if it is less than, we go to this label, which is the then portion. Otherwise, we go to the else portion. So now I want to look for the else portion just to make sure that it does exist. <clears throat> All right, so the else portion is, okay, the else is here, okay, so we can see the else portion, which is here, but I'm missing one thing. If I look at the structure of a conditional statement that has both the then statement and also the else statement, I'm missing something, because this is supposed to be the end of the then portion, but this is the, supposed to be the beginning of the else portion. There's nothing here to divert me to all the way to the end of the conditional statement. Because without that JMPI instruction, after it's done with the then portion, it falls through to perform whatever the else portion is supposed to be doing. And that is not what the code is supposed to do. So that means we are missing a unconditional branch at the end of the conditional, of the then portion. So we're gonna have to say JMPI. Now, the question is, do I have a label already defined for that particular end? And I think so. Um, let's see. There we go. So insert then end if zero. This one here, that's the end of that corresponding JMPI instruction. So we just have to say then zero end if zero. So JMPI to, uh, what was it again? Insert. <clears throat> I cannot remember my own variable name, so let's check it again. Then zero and if zero. Oops. There we go. Okay, so I'm so the, the key here is I am analyzing the code in a structured way. I'm not waiting until I get to the end of the then portion. I'm checking it right away because you know I'm seeing the beginning of a conditional statement. I check the structure of the conditional statement before I go back into the detail of the of the conditional statement. Okay, so we got a few things fixed, and now we are going to look into this call on line 108. So now we're actually looking at the C code and see if it is done correctly. Um, all right, so we are adding L, we are loading node L to A, and we are adding A to C. Register C is still unmodified, so that means at this point, register C is the address of whatever PPA points to, and that is its own pointer to a structure. And then we are looking at the L member of that structure, but we are only getting the address because I'm adding the offset to member L to the beginning of the entire structure. Is that okay? Are there any questions about this? So all of this has to do with, I keep track of what is in each register. Because if, if I scroll up a little bit earlier, you can see that you know I know what is in register C all the way back 
on line 92, and that has not changed. Okay, so that's why you know it is important for you to write down what is in the register because it can come in handy in the future so that when you have references to the value of a register, you have to know what is in that register. So that's how I can figure out um, on line 110, we have the address in register C, and now on line 111, we have the actual content. All right. All right, so now we look at the context of this whole thing. It's like, wait, tech, why are we having the, the value of member L of the structure that is pointed to by a pointer, which in return is pointed to by PP at, attach? It's like, we're not supposed to have the content or the value of L. We're supposed to get the address. So I think that we dereference one time too many. Okay, so now you can go like here and go to the same line, which is line 111, cross it out, and say, you know, one, two, many, the reference, because we're supposed to push the address on the stack, not the pointer itself on the stack. Is that okay? I wouldn't be able to spot this error if I had not been you know, tracking you know, the instructions. Okay. But there's no push here, okay? So now we are looking on the, at the first argument, or the second, sorry, the second argument, which is PN. We have the offset, we have the address, and wait, hold on a second here. We're not supposed to push the address of PN, we're supposed to push the actual PN on the stack. By the time we push B, okay, we do not have another dereference. So that means I have a missing dereference in this case. So now I have to go in here, and say uh, we need um, L, D, B, B, because if you look at this point here, B has the address of PN, and now B has PN in it, which is what we're supposed to push. All right, so we document D, we push B, which is PN, okay? We push the second argument first, and then we push we decrement D again, and then we push register C, which has uh, the address of member L of the structure that is pointed to by a pointer, which in return is pointed to by PP attach. So that is now pushed on the stack on line 117. Um, oh, okay, syntax error here. We have two plus instead of one. So we cross this out. Okay, so we just put a circle here, one, plus, and that's the return address. Make sure that we push it on the stack just because I put it into a register does not mean it is on the stack. So we have to make sure that it is pushed on the stack. We continue execution at insert, which is the call. We increment D twice because there are two arguments still sitting on the stack when it returns, and that's about it, okay? That looks good to me, okay? And then whatever the return value of insert is, becomes my own return value because you know, I'm supposed to return the return value without any changes. So that's okay. Once I have the JMPI to the end of that nested condition, that conditional statement, we are all good there. Yep. See again? Dot six plus. Um, the dot five plus, oh, you're correct. It should be a dot six plus in this case. When I touch the screen, they change the uh, six because decrement D is after the I. Okay, thank you. That's a good spot over there. All right. Okay, LDIC dot six plus decrement D, STDC, JMPI insert. Okay, I think we're good there. All right, so let me take a look at the time. <clears throat> All right, so now we move on to line 127 and the code that it is supposed to do. And you can see that this time it doesn't look like it's doing what it's supposed to. Where's the compare? Where's all the other stuff? We don't need that because the compare has already occurred. 
Okay, so let me point out why that is the case. Um, the C code may be better, but I think the assembly code is sufficient also. Let me, let me hide this one. Because I want to show you both. Ah, I cannot do that. Okay, see how line 96 is comparing for the less than, and then on line 127 is comparing for the greater than, but it's the same thing being compared. Do we see all that? Do we see it? Okay, let me point out again. On line 96, we're comparing these two things, but we are looking for the less than. And then later on, on line 127, we are still comparing the same two things, but this time we're trying to confirm the greater than. So the compare does not need to happen again because the flags, by the time we get to um, line 128, the flags are still being set right after the CMP instruction, okay? So we just have to confirm that, okay, if it is greater than, then we're gonna do the then portion. But instead of doing that, if you think about the comparison, you have three possible outcomes less than, equal to, or greater than. We, we handled the less than already, okay? So now this time I only have to handle the equal to because the equal to is the only thing that can be other than the greater than. So if it equals to, then we have to go to the else corresponding to this nested conditional statement, which means you know, whatever is left on line 129 and up and down would be the then portion corresponding to the nested conditional statement here. So it is harder for me to illustrate it without showing you the C code, but in the test, you would have the C code right next to your code, so it's easier for you to look at the actual nested nature of the original C program. So I would advise doing that, which is looking at the C code on the side. Even though I try to sprinkle the C code in here, it is harder to see the actual structure. All right, so once again, I'm looking at the structure of the code. I want to get to the end of this portion and make sure I have a jump around to the end if. We're good there. This, this is the else label. We only want to return a zero. Okay, that's good enough for just returning a zero. And then the end label of the entire thing is over here. So that is all looking good to me. So now I can really focus on <clears throat> uh, line 30 and down there. So line 30 has an offset. We have the address on line 131. Um, and then we decrement, we push. Okay, so we, once again, we are pushing the address of PN. So that means I need to fix it. But in order to fix it, I need to also comment on you know, why there's a problem. Um, okay, let's try it again. Okay, there we go. So B is um, the offset to PN. And now we have B being the address of PN. So by the time we push it on line 133, we would have pushed the address of PN. But that's not what the code is asking us to do. The code is asking us to push PN, not the address of PN. So that means we have a missing D reference here. So that means you know, we just have to say, okay, we need a LD, B, B in this case, so that B becomes PN and not the address of PN. Okay, so with that line inserted here, I can now push PN, which is good. And then I have node R, which is the offset to member R of a structure. And then we add C, which is still the address of the structure, okay, because of the branching. So by the time we get to this line, register C would still have the address of a structure. So by adding those two, I would end up with the address of member R of the structure that is pointed to by A pointer, which in return is pointed to by PPA. So this is actually correct. Then we have the push. We push B first, okay, so that's good. And then we push, oh, okay, I don't see the push of register C. There's one here, but this register, this register B was never pushed. So that means I got some missing instructions to add back here. Okay, are you guys following all this? Okay, so we have register B calculated by the time we get to here. 
Okay, so register B is now the address of this thing here, which is the first argument of the recursive call. I got the right thing in the register, but I never pushed this register B. Well, let me see. Oh, we do, okay. So we did push it, okay, that's all good. So we push the uh, register B and then we push the return address. And once again, the return address has one too many plus, but other than that, it is also using the wrong, it's using the wrong offset because decrement D this time is before the LDI instruction. So we got two things to fix with that, okay. All right, so let's go back to where we were, okay. Um, so just one plus, and then this should be a five. It should be a five because we have decrement before the LD, because all we want to do is to make sure that uh, the LDI instruction on line 138, 139 is specifying the right return point. So we do the counting, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So five is the correct offset. So that six should be changed to a five. All right, so we do the actual call after we push the return address and then we increment the stack pointer twice to get rid of the two arguments still sitting on the stack and then we branch all the way around the then portion to the end of that conditional statement. So that all look good to me. Uh, the else portion is just returning a zero in the C code which to us is just loading a zero into register A because register A is used to return a value. So that looks good. And we checked the end already, I think. Oh, we have the else here. So this else is supposed to get PN and change whatever PP attaches pointing to, to PN. So we just do this step by step, okay? So at this point, I have no idea what this algorithm is really doing. I'm focusing on the statements, I'm focusing on the expression, I'm focusing on what each register has. All right, so we have the offset. Aha, we're using the offset as if it is an address. So what is, in, what is missing? Yep. Yep, I have to turn off one of the touch event because whenever I put my palm on the surface, you know, it jumps to the end of the page. So this is the offset to PN. Then I'm using it as if it's an address. So that means we are missing an L add uh, BD so that B becomes the address of PN. With that, then B is PN here, which is good. That's my right-hand side. And now the question is, does register A have whatever PP attach is pointing to? So the question is, how did I get to insert uh, else zero? So that means I have to now go all the way back. Okay, so now my attention is, I need to come back to line 163 once I'm done, but I need to go all the way back to see what is the branch that will, let, that will lead me to insert underscore else zero. So we have to go all the way back here and see that, ah, this is the only reason I can end up at that label. And then at that point, register A has PPA in it. So that means by the time we get to, doo -doo -doo -doo, so that's why I said earlier, you have to kind of keep a mental note of where you were at because we are supposed to get back to line 163. So by the time we get here, register A still has PPA in it. And the statement says, don't change PPA, change what it is pointing to. So that would be correct because we are changing whatever PPA is pointing to using the ST instruction. So this actually does check out, not a problem. So if it checks out, don't fix it, okay? You can comment if you want to, but do not suggest any changes. Um, and then we have a single return one after this, okay? Loading A with one is what we need. And if, okay, and then the rest we check already because we 
uh, we check the program systematically, structurally. So we actually check that earlier when I just look at the overall structure of the of the function. All right, so now we're on to main. So the first thing main has is uh, nodes, which is a local variable. So the only thing that looks like a local variable in this case is main underscore nodes because um, that tells you that nodes belongs to main. So we have 500, 0, 700, 0, 0, and then the rest should be correct as well. We have a 300, 0, 0, 100, 0, 0, and 900. 0, 0. Okay, so those are all correct. So we are good up to line 199, and then we get to main. Main has um, local variables, um, which I did not show here, but these are local variables of main. P root, P node, counter, those are all local variables. So these are the offsets once we set up the call frame. Um, P root is the first one, has an offset of zero from where the stack pointer points to. Once we have the frame set up, uh, P node is next, so it is after P root, um, off by one byte, because that's the size of a pointer. Counter is right after P node, it is also one plus, because P node is also just a pointer, it takes up one byte on the stack. LVS local var size is the offset to the last local variable, plus the size of the local variable itself, counter is a unsigned AB integer, so that's why one plus is also correct. So this calculated the, uh, the right size of the local variables correctly, but the only reason why we do the calculation is because we needed to allocate for the frame, okay? Because the, a function is responsible to allocate for its own local variable. So that means, hey, if I'm referring to the offset here, I better make sure the frame is already set up, which it never was. So that means I'm missing some code here to set up the frame. So now I have to do the insert notation and say LDI B with main LVS um, subtract B from D, okay, to allocate local variables, okay. So by the very same token, I better make sure that I deallocate it too. So this is what I meant when I said, you know, I look at the program you know, in a structure way. So at the end here, I do not see the matching end of deallocating. So that's what we need to do here as well, is to LDIB with main LVS. And then this time we are adding. Oops. Um, we are adding B to D. There we go. Okay, so to D allocate local variables. Okay, so with that done, we are now back to the beginning. All right. So now we do some tracking. Um, B is zero, it is the right hand side. We have main root, which is the offset loaded into A. Uh, adding D to A makes it the address of root, and then we copy B to A, that's all good. Uh, counter equals to zero, uh, let LDI, okay, and let me point out here. To line 214, we are loading the offset. Line 15, 215, we are computing the address, and then we are storing zero, which is still in register B to whatever register is pointing to. That seems correct to me. Counter is now initialized to zero. And now we want to look at the address of one structure past the end of nodes, which is an array. So we are loading into B. Main nodes is telling us where to find nodes itself. And then num nodes tells us how many nodes we have. Node size is the size of each node. So when we multiply these two using this multiplication, we have the total number of bytes needed by the array itself. And then we add the product to where we find the beginning of nodes. That is the address of the last one element past the end of the entire array. That seems correct to me. So line 218 is correct. Line 219 is computing the offset of P node, adding the stack pointer to the offset, gives me the address. And then we store B, which is the address of the 
element past the end of the array nodes to whatever A is pointing to. A has the address of P node. So that seems correct to me. Line 221 is okay. And then line 20, 222 marks the beginning of a loop. So once again, we have a control structure. What I do is I look at the structure first and then I go into the, the loop itself. So it helps to kind of change the thing here. So in order for a loop to function, we need to have a label that marks the beginning of the entire loop, which is what line 223 is doing. Uh, we need a branch all the way to the end. So that's what line 230 is doing, is getting to the end to exit the loop. But at the end of the loop, we also need an unconditional branch back to the beginning of the entire loop, which is missing. Because when you look at this, this line is supposed to be the end of the while loop. So without the JMPI back to the beginning, it's going to fall through. It is as if it is just a conditional statement. So that's not okay because this is supposed to be a loop. So that means you know, we need to add uh, a label, uh, JMPI here, JMPI to, I use a very you know, standard way to name the labels. So main while zero underscore begin to get back to the beginning. I mean, you have freedom of how detailed you want to right here, okay? But the point is kind of explain to me why we need that instruction, okay? So this is how I do things, okay? You don't have to do it the same way, but I just you know, like to analyze the structure of things first, and then we get to the detail inside of the structure. So now we are ready to get into the actual body of the loop. So the first thing we need to do is to get the address of nodes bracket zero, which is the address of the first element of the array, which is really just the beginning of the entire array itself. And we want to check whether P node is that or not. All right, so uh, line 224 is computing um, main nodes is the beginning of the entire array. We multiply zero to node size, you know, because you know, we are addressing um, the first element and then we add that product to the beginning of the entire array. So that seems correct to me, okay? So line 224B, register B, has the right-hand side of the comparison. Wait, but line 225 says, let's add the stack pointer to B. That's not right, okay? So we are gonna have to fix that. So we say, nope, we don't need this. Um, the explanation is nodes, is not on the stack, okay? Because nodes, even though it is a local variable, it is declared static in the C code. So that means it is not on the stack. Are we doing okay so far with that concept? Because that's one of the concepts that we may not have discussed in all the previous sample programs. But it is in CISP 360, or it should be. Is it okay so far? Okay. If it's not, it is okay. It is being recorded. So, you know, I can actually give you the code. I can give you the corrected code as well. So you can actually run it and play with it until you are convinced that you know what is happening or what should be happening at what time. All right. So line 226 is the offset. And then line 227 makes it the address. And then line 228 makes it the actual P node. Okay, so I think we got the right things you know, loaded into registers A and B at this point. We compare. If they are the same, which means they are not, not equal to, that gives me a good reason to exit. Okay, so line 223, line 230 seems to be correct. Are we still doing okay so far? Because we stay in the loop when the comparison is not equal to. So as soon as it is equal to, we are getting out of here. Okay? All right. So we are checking everything and up to and including line 230. So I have seen people doing this. Okay? So they just put a little check mark. 
to remind themselves you know that they are done up to that point okay and I suggest that you do the same thing because otherwise it might be a little hard to kind of track you know where you're at especially if you need to kind of close your eyes for a little bit you know take a break take a break you know as you're doing this all right so now we have minus minus p node which means we want to decrement whatever p node has okay so we have the offset we got the address this is the actual value of p node we subtract one from whatever p node has and then we store that back into p node that seems correct to me okay and then we have the next line which is counter plus equal to the return value of calling insert okay so let's check out what this is doing the first thing it does here is to um, decrement D and then push basically we are pushing register B on the stack right here you go like what are we pushing well if I did not document the earlier instructions I would not know what is in register B so I better make sure that I document everything now okay so that means register A has the offset to P node now, if you want to abbreviate the name of the variable, as long as it is clear to me what you mean by that, like P node becomes PN, that's fine too, okay? So this helps to minimize you know, the amount of time that you need for writing. Um, so now a, oops, I have to turn off the, <clears throat> some of the touch events. So A is now the address of PN, and now B is, and itself and that's kind of what I need it is the value of PN so um, by the time we get to line 242 register B is PN okay but I need you to show me how you know this so that means that you have to track at least up to this point so that I can be convinced that you know how to figure out what is the value of register B by the time we get to line 242. Okay. All right. So what do we do with that? We push it on the stack. Yep. That's uh, what we expect to do because it is the second argument, the last argument. It gets pushed first. And then we uh, have to push P root on the stack. And then we go like, whoa, okay, this has to be wrong, okay? But let's figure out what, how we should fix it. So we're supposed to push the address of P root on the stack, but we have one extra thing on the stack already. So the normal way that we compute the address of a stack-based item is now one byte off. So what we need to do to fix this problem is we take this out, okay? And then we specify one plus because the stack has already has p and pushed so all the offset that we computed using the label definition they're off by one byte now because we got one we got that one extra thing on the stack all right so with that correction a one plus okay without that extra plus here that's the offset that's the address we push the address on the stack that's okay. That's what we are supposed to do here. We push the address on the stack, and then we push the return address on the stack. This time, the dot six plus um, before the decrement D. Yeah, that's good. You can know whether it's good or not just by counting, because we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's how we can know that you know six dot six plus is the correct specification of the return address. We got everything pushed. We got the two arguments pushed. We got the return address pushed. We have the actual call, okay, the actual jump into the subroutine, because if you're missing that one, it's not going to work, okay? <clears throat> so now we have, um, we are supposed to store that, or we are supposed to use the return value of insert to increment, to add to the value of counter. So now we want to see if that is done correctly, okay? So I'm just, um, I'm just using my head to track all the things now. So this is after a call, which means we cannot rely on anything in the registers the way they were before the call. So that means, okay, we have the offset, we have the address, 
So register C has the address of counter. Register B now has the value of counter. We add register A, which is the return value of the function call, to register B, which is the value of counter. And then we store that new value back into the uh, whatever the address of counter is. So that's correct. Okay, so we update you know, the value of counter correctly here. And then we have the end of the while loop. This is a return statement of main. Main has its own return code back to the entry code. Um, so I think we got everything done. With 10 minutes to spare in the lecture. So that means in an actual exam, we would have, what, almost an hour to spare. Yep, go ahead. Oh, did I forget? Uh huh. Yep. Yep. But it is still correct because we store that value back to whatever A is pointing to, and A has the address of PN. So B is still the current value of PN, even though we decremented it. But the decremented value is in is still in B, so that means I can still claim at this point that B is the current value of PN. But that's a that's a good point. Okay, you know I did not quite analyze that portion. You know because you know, but that's a good point. Does everybody understand the question? More or less, maybe no. Okay, let me let me add some more comments here just to be sure. So now. Register B is PN minus one. And now register B is PN again, because we store the value of PN minus one back to PN. So by the time we get to line 239, the value of register B is once again the value of PN, because we store that back to where PN is supposed to be on the stack. All right, so we still got a few minutes, like eight of them, before the end of the lecture. Given this is the format of your test, okay, and I know for sure this is gonna be the format of this final exam as well, how are you going to pre prepare for the exam? So I have a few things to suggest, okay? First of all, a little checklist, okay? Now, how you want to write your own checklist is up to you, okay? I have the entire checklist in my head, but it's good to write it out too. So what you're looking for are all the caller callee agreements, okay? So make sure you write all of those or know where to find it. You can just print my module if you want to. Perfectly okay, not a problem. Um, so that would include the ordering of pushing the arguments. Last argument is pushed first and then you push the return address, and then you do the jump, but the caller is responsible to, de, uh, to deallocate all the arguments. If there's any return value, it's gonna be register A, right? So all of those are, you know, okay, there's a little bit more. The callee is responsible to pop the return address, okay? So that's also important. And the way we return to the caller is to pop the return address and then do a JMP with a register that contains the return address. So all of those are caller callee agreement. No register is preserved by the callee is another one. It's an important one because if the code shows that, okay, I'm saving the return value, blah, 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 in a particular register, and then I call a subroutine, and then later on assume that that register still has that value, it's not gonna work, okay? Um, so that's caller callee agreement. The callee, the function being called has some extra stuff that it might need to do because if it has local variables, the function is responsible to allocate on the stack for its own local variables. So that, but that has nothing to do with the caller. The caller does not know anything about the local variables. So you have to write down all of those things because every single one of those is a checkpoint. When it comes to control structures, you, have, you can refer to uh, the module. You can print only the first portion of that module because the other portion is just a huge long example, so you might not want to waste paper on that one. 
But you have to look at the structure of a conditional statement. Okay, what does it look like? You have to look at the structure of a loop. What does it look like? We only have what three control structures, two being most commonly used. We have the if, okay, which includes if then else and just if then. We have the while, and then we have the do while. Do while I don't use a lot, okay, maybe occasionally, but it's even it's actually the simpler of the two. Okay, the while loop is actually the more complicated. But you have to understand why we have the unconditional branch all the way back to the beginning, what those two labels are, you know, one to so that I can find the beginning of the entire thing, but so that I can find the end of the entire thing. So those are the structures of things. Um, okay. Uh, of course, you have to be familiar with all the instructions. Okay. What does ST do? What does LD do? What does LDI do? What does CPR do? Okay. Because they all seem to change something <laughs> based on the other thing. But what is it changing? Okay. What am I overwriting? Am I overwriting a register or am I overwriting the location pointed to by a register? Okay, so all of those things you really, really have to understand. There's no, there's no getting around that one then, you know, at this point. Um, the meaning of the labels, okay? We have two main categories of labels. One cate category of labels is trying to tell us the offset to things in the frame, okay? And that would include all the local variables that are auto, as well as all the parameters. That's one, one type of label. The other type of labels define the offset to individual members inside a structure, or the offset to the members in a structure. So there are two main families of labels that we use in this class. You have to know what each one is representing and how do we use those labels, okay? Um, the stack, okay? Register D is the stack pointer, okay? How do we push? How do we pop? How do we just allocate but don't specify the actual value? How do we deallocate without you know, retrieving the values of what is whatever is on the stack? So all of those, you have to kind of, I mean, this sample program has all of those elements. You just have to find it. Um, what else? Oh, track what is on the stack, okay? Because the labels to all the things in the frame they are based on the assumption that we are just done allocating for all the local variables. So they have that assumption. If you have pushed additional items on the stack, then you have to account for the additional offset to those items on the stack. So that means you know, after you push something, you have to make a mental note or write down that you have one extra thing on the stack so that when you need to calculate the offset of other things on the stack, you have to remember to add that particular offset to all the labels. All right, I think that's about sums up all the things that you need to kind of remember. The only question is how quickly can you track the registers? And that comes with practice, which means for people who have not done a single thing that I have suggested since the, second, since the end of the second exam, which is, this is my sample program. I intentionally leave out all the comments. It is your job. I want you to use that as a note taking and a, and a tool to help you understand all the, you know, how to use the registers. For people who just ignore that recommendation, if there's still time to make up, but you're gonna need some you know, intense follow-up exercise to get familiarized with that. But for people who have been doing that all along, you know, it should be relatively quick to figure out, oh, okay, this is intended to do this, this is doing this, okay, now we have that in that register. So, and just kind of you know, write down those things because I cannot track what is in the register unless I write it down, okay? So all of these are important things. Um, for those of you who are visual, bring graph paper so that you can visualize what is supposed to be on the stack, what is pointing to what, and so on, if you want to track that. Um, you can bring a C programming textbook if you want to, but I don't think that is necessary because you know the operators that we have used are the most basic of the pointer stuff, structure, and arrays. I mean, there's nothing special that I use other than you know, what should be already been covered in CISP 360. Um, 
you're welcome to bring all the sample programs with you. If, for those of you who want to bring you know, all the sample programs that I have done up to this point, or all the ones that you can get your hands on from other you know, the students that you have come across, you can do all that. I'm not sure whether that's going to be super helpful or not, you know, because when you're already in the exam, trying to look up something in a sample program may not be very effective, okay? because you know, that can use a lot of time. Um, that's all I can think of. You know, everything should be on paper, you know, no electronic devices other than a calculator. And I don't think a calculator is going to be super handy in this test but you're welcome to bring one. Um, do you guys have any questions? Yep, go ahead. Yes, so <clears throat> in, so I basically just used the same uh, final exam schedule. So let me, let me see if I can find the page. Oh, okay, I guess not. All right, so let's see. I think for this class it is Wednesday. Okay, let me let me bring this to your view and then we'll double check. Because I think I put it onto the calendar already. All right, so let's go to the calendar. Um, yeah, I don't have any particular lab for today. Um, if you want to use the lab time to work on your homework assignments, that's due on Wednesday, that's good. But otherwise, I don't have any specific things for you guys to do during the lab time. So for this class, it is in December. Okay, I have not put an entry here, um, but it, I believe it is the 13th. Let me double check. So American final exam schedule. This is a Monday, Wednesday class. The lecture starts at 1030. So it's a Monday, Wednesday class. And the start time is between 930 and 1040. So our exam time is next Wednesday from 1015 to 1215. I'll put a calendar. Uh, event in uh, Canvas as well. But it's good for you to kind of put an entry in your mobile device if you want to. All right, anything else that you want me to kind of go over? We still have Wednesday, but on Wednesday I'm going to go over the solution of the Traverse homework assignment, which is not a debugging process. It is more of a just you know, kind of synthesis process. And this time, I remember not to give you guys the solution before the due date. <laughs> All right. Anything else? It's just a lot of stuff to track. So if you have a specific way to help you track all those registers, you know, it's going to be helpful. But other than that, I really cannot think of any other thing to do. Maybe post-its, okay? Maybe post-its can be helpful. Just those are your tiny little post-its. So this way, you know, you can say, okay, I'm here, but I need to look for the ending of this control structure so you can go forward, look for the ending, and then go back to where you're supposed to be at. So, you know, just a little tiny little post-it as a bookmark, you know, that can be helpful. Highlighters can be helpful. Bringing, you know, pens or writing instruments of different colors may be helpful. Um, yeah, I cannot think of anything else. All right, so it's uh, 11.55, so I will let you guys go. If you want to go, if you want to stay here to work on your homework assignment, that's fine too. I'll stay here and answer your questions. All right, see you guys all on Wednesday. It's going to be a useful class because you know, the more you have exposure to these concepts, the more you're prepared, prepared for the final exam. So I would definitely come to the Wednesday class so that you know, we can go over the concepts again. It's just a matter of getting used to the concepts. All right, I will post the uh, recording online and 
see you all on Wednesday.